This picks up on the uh, cylinder structure process and we'll fill in uh, the value here. So the first thing you do is poster and you'll notice here that I just go right over any lines wherever there is shadow you simply fill in a tone. Right now you don't have to differentiate tone very much. Um, the next stage is to begin differentiating the cast shadow which I've done here and then move on to differentiating the shadow core. The shadow core being the, the dark band uh, where the shadow kind of creates a tangent. And what I don't want to do is go along with marks that um, that go along the direction that the shadow core moves um, because that would weaken the transition. So on the inside of a cup like this you have a cast shadow so you want to develop that and make sure that the curve um, works with the curvature of the lip. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to anchor the piece. And anchoring is when you put in the darkest dark and the lightest light. So that expands your value range out from 0 to 10. So what I'm doing here is finding the absolute darkest bits of the shadow. And you'll notice that for a while it two-dimensionalizes the object because you have this very, very dark line that's distinct from the rest of the form. But as you move through the process and, and approach um, the actual values that you need, that will change. The rule of thumb with adding value is that when there's a change in plane, there's a change in the value. Conversely, when there's a change in value, that implies a change in, in the plane. So with a circular or rounded object, there are continuous plane changes all the way around. So you want to create a continuous value change. And that's what I am attempting to do, to do around the shadow core uh, and have the, the value shift towards the shadow core, deepen, and then lighten a little bit. The other thing that you can focus on when you're working on shadows is softening the edges of the shadows. And whenever you want to soften an edge, you don't want to go parallel to the direction of the edge. You want to go at an oblique angle to that. Um, and as you go, one of the things that you can begin doing is refine, refining and finding the correct edges of the form. You've done a lot of measuring in the line work stage, but that doesn't mean that you can't go back into the earlier steps of the process and refine the uh, the end result as you as you as you near completion. So what I'm doing here is I'm realizing that I don't like the ellipse a lot. So I'm going to go back and refine that initial ellipse and try to get it to to something that's a little more comfortable and workable. Um, and sometimes you do have to erase. So generally speaking, we don't want our eraser to be a mistake fixing tool. We want it to be a drawing tool. And that's what differentiates the eraser from uh, writing to actually drawing with it. You think you think of it as a way to lighten value or to um, or to correct little edges, but not to erase your entire drawing and start over. So you'll notice here that the ellipse is getting a little more comfortable and uh, a little more accurate. 